It's official. Mai, in whatever timeline you put her in, carries trunks. Without her, he's toast. Let me explain. So we finished the pre-superhero arc of the Dragon Ball manga not too long ago, and the crowd went home. It was a shame, really, because Havarok and I really enjoyed this segment of Dragon Ball Super's manga. It was a refreshing change of pace after nearly two years spent with granola on Planet Serial, as well as helping fully explain the fleshing out and growth of Trunks and Goten, as well as making the whole gimmick with Mai and he all the more awkward. Mm and uncertain and vague, because that's what modern Dragon Ball experiences a lot, I think. Vagueness. However, that's not the main focus for today's video. You can watch this video here for something dedicated to that primarily. For this, I wanted to talk about Mai as a character and where she goes from here. It's quite clear that from this point forward, we are going into what is essentially the retelling of the superhero movie. So she's not likely going to be featuring in a meaningful capacity. Granted, that could change depending on what Toriyotaro has in store and what he'd like to cook to bring to the table for his version of events. Or Toriyama might have stuff that he wrote and developed lying around that he couldn't add to the final release but now can in the manga. Because apparently his first draft of the superhero script was considerably longer than what we got. Nearly three hours. We shall have to wait and see if Mai gets added in but for now her job is done. And I think that she's actually influenced quite a lot not just for Trunks but also for Dr. Hedo, giving him a lot to think about. Now, I've touched upon this with Hav a couple of times, but I really wanted to share it with all of you right now, flesh out the idea that I have for you. I don't think Gamma 1 is based on Trunks and Gamma 2 on Goten. I think Mai is Gamma 1's inspiration, so here's why. It's quite obvious that Dr. Hedo deems the Saiyan pair of Goten and Trunks as very cool, and visually speaking, they are hands down the inspiration for the basic look of the Gamma Droids, the third iteration of his artificial humans, which endeared themselves to us in the superhero movie, because Gamma 2, he's, he's the goat. However, the mood presented to us seemed a little off. It didn't really feel clear or right to me that Trunks, the obvious leader in the Saiyan double act, is Gamma 1. I mean, Gamma 2 Goten? No. Then I also thought that Gamma 1 was based off of Hedo's idol's sidekick. You know, the droid that features in this photograph here of the Doctor getting an autograph from the now called Clean God. Like he was bringing to life an already existing entity and dabbling with copyright infringement. Not that we'd know anything about that, but no, it was something different. Based on chapter 90 of the manga, I feel that Mai's persona and demeanour in the heat of battle is clearly the thing that inspired Hedo in crafting Gamma 1's overall mood. Gamma 1 is cool, calm, stoic, and serious in his duty, and also incredibly loyal and honourable, whereas Gamma 2 is the brash, loud one with oodles of gusto. In Chapter 90, Hedo's biggest comic book-like experience as a bad guy, Mai is the one mostly facing off against him as the hero, whereas Trunks is goofing off until they fight a dinosaur. Yes, of course, Trunks and Goten then go on to win outright after fighting that massive Dinobot, which was very, very cool, by the way. But Mai was the one to bravely face the Doctor at the dance party in a very impressive battle armor, taking charge and punching above her weight. I mean, look, come on, there's another clue. Even the way she holds her armament is reminiscent to Gamma 1's poses in the movie. It's clear to me that Hedo has cherished this memory of getting to live out a superhero action sequence of his own. Actually, getting to live out a comic book. And this whole encounter, and this was the final piece of the puzzle in crafting two loyal minions to do his bidding as well as protect him, and basically being cool characters. He has the archetype of Mai to draw inspiration from during his time in prison. So let's delve deeper as to why she is a great choice to craft a minion, and why I believe that I feel like really Trunks needs her a lot. He is dependent on her. With this latest mini arc over and done with, and something that I touched upon in my chapter review, Mai is basically the brains of the Saiyan even though she doesn't really represent them, or choose to partake in their antics. Without her input, I can categorically tell you that Hedo might have actually gotten away with a lot of his misdemeanors and continuing to make zombie droids to fund his research without anyone batting an eye. I feel that Hedo isn't angry about being rumbled or losing to another smart individual. After all, mad scientists like that have little patience for stupidity or simple creatures. What they crave and draw solace from are instances with like-minded persons. He got outsmarted by Mai 
who is also not afraid to put herself on the line, despite her lack of physical strength when compared to our half Saiyan counterparts and flunkies. That is something I feel that Hedo can definitely respect. Mai said herself, point blank, that she was tired of playing the damsel in distress, something that her future counterpart also expressed and never subscribed to. But you should subscribe to this video. And therein lies the straightforward, that Mai naturally becomes a badass no matter what timeline you're in when you push it hard enough. Seeing this play out in chapter 90 was a really fun callback and reminder of future Mai the character which made the Goku Black arc for me. I've said on multiple occasions that Future Mai is one of the bravest characters in the entire Super Series, if not modern Dragon Ball, period. She's not strong, at least from the Dragon Team's point of view, and yet she is selfless, willing to protect others, and also try things which might put her at risk, but could at least turn the tide against their enemy and into the hero's favour. When she was willing to snipe Goku Black, despite the seemingly being fruitless or pointless, she tried it anyway, and that fascinated me. Had she successfully hit Black, either in the head or destroying his Patara, that could have changed the entirety of the rest of the arc. Granted, future Zamasu might have ended her in anger, but she wouldn't have cared. She would have done her duty and possibly helped Trunks save the world or even the universe from Fuse Zamasu and then Infinite Zamasu and the infinite BS that was episode 67. I understand why some of you might think I'm overhyping her and okay, all right, that's fair but you can't deny that the fact that she even tried to give it a go is at least a little bit commendable, right? And this give it a go frame of mind against the odds is something that has now been influencing present Mai too. She did get to meet her future self and whether or not that maybe sparked her change as a slow burner is worthy for debate, but it's now manifested itself after a few years, I think. She has told Goten point blank that she is not willing to wait for a superhero to come along anymore fixing her problems, because, like with future Mai, that ain't gonna happen in a timely manner. She, together with Trunks' help, managed to keep humanity going in the future, despite the fact that they were fighting against a Kai in Goku's body. That's mighty impressive no matter who you are. You could argue that Black maybe was toying with them, playing with his food, but hey, when we got to them they were still alive. You gotta be in it to win it, or not lose it as quickly regardless of the hubris of Akai. Future Mai and Trunks worked together, and without her help, Trunks was very much on the back foot and was struggling trying to save people and stopping Black from destroying people. It meant that Trunks didn't have to multitask. They were a great team and they did get some results. She carried him so he could live out his full potential. Before the writers chose to shaft them and then shuffle them off into another dimension where a copy of them both exist and... Ugh. Wow. But going back to the present, future Mai's soul has effectively been transplanted or replicated into present Mai, who has now gotten sick of being a demure damsel or waiting for Trunks to actually get a grip and figure something out, or being an also-ran from her dates in the Pilaf gang. She is now fired up from all of this investigating Dr. Hedo and then having been proved to be right, finding a person like Hedo in which to thwart. This all making her feel all the more superior, in a world where that's very rare to achieve if you can't punch people, where most of the people can actually put a hole in a planet. When we just had chapter 89 to work with, we kind of felt bad for Mai, thinking that she had nothing to live for and she was just an empty shell, that she was just fawning for future trunks, but now though, that's changed. We feel a lot more relieved with her lot. She's now on the hunt, feeling useful, like her future counterpart, and then she's got to deal with this thing. Her maturity is showing in that she's not very impressed with Trunks' behaviour at all. Neither am I. Or you, probably. She really doesn't have time for it, and in more in tune with Bulma, I believe, given that she kind of knows that Trunks will probably mess something up here, as does his mother. Yes, Trunks' writing in this chapter is pretty weird and kind of... Toyotaro isn't that great in writing this version of the character. But hey, he was very good with the future one though. You know, where he would lambast Vegeta a whole lot during that manga arc? There were a couple of monologues that Future Trunks had which were actually pretty good. This iteration though just feels like a liability. You know, when he isn't decking people in the schnoz with Goten and going Super Saiyan. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. And this is exacerbated where he is clearly meant to be the main character of this mini arc. But this is the thing which I feel supports my theory that Mai, in whatever timeline you stick her in these days, has to carry trunks. It's kind of a job. In the future, she wholeheartedly loves the challenge, but here, 
it seems like a crux. Now, I'm not stating this in a romantic sense of anything that she has to carry him. This is more like basic functionality and trying to get things done for a general mission or task. Mai has to be the support for Trunks in both the present and the future to allow the son of Vegeta to realize his maximum. The difference lies in their basic temperament and motive. You see, future Trunks needs Mai's support because she is dependable, she is caring, and solid as a rock, and that's pretty good characteristics to have. Future Trunks needs that competence and emotional stability in which to remain focused in fighting for the future. And in turn, this then gives Future Mai comfort knowing that Trunks is alright and is able to help her stave off Goku Black and impending doom. It's perpetual optimism against pessimism. But present Trunks is, um, operating from his second brain mostly. The one which you really shouldn't be listening to when the fate of the world or the fate of the universe is at stake. Isn't that right, Krillin? I'm only human! After all, don't put the blame on me! It's kind of sad, actually. We thought that Future Trunks had managed to rub off on present Trunks, but no. He just rubs one off whenever he sees Mai. But in all seriousness, Trunks doesn't really get that Mai is in charge here. It took Goten a little while to figure that out, but he did figure it out and quickly pivoted to trusting Mai's judgments and opinions, going, whoa, well done Mai, I didn't think of that. Understanding that she is super smart and knows what she's talking about, but Trunks just has the horn for her. He's not really fully listening to what she has to say or what she's actually come to the conclusion of, and will only do things if promised something in return. At least this eases the tension regarding mutually desired dating, because that's not the thing. That's not the case. It's clear from the dialogue here in chapter 90 that Mai doesn't really care for Trunks in that way. She's only agreeing to go on dates with him to shut him up and get him to go after Hedo and punch his face in on her instructions. Because she ordered him to. A strong-willed woman bossing him around. Why does that sound oddly familiar? But even then, don't those two instances sound completely different to one another? Sure, they have the same outcome, but Trunks from the Future's needs for Mai is based on trust, whereas this present Trunks bases his need on Mai on... attraction alone. Not really seeing her true value, which his pal Goten quickly understood. He's blinded by lust, Trunks. Still though, even if the present iteration's values are questionable, Trunks' need for Mai is apparent, and it shows that Mai can kick ass. And that suit of armor is amazing, and I will be so happy to see anybody rocking that at a con. So where does this leave Mai then? Well, in kind of an ambivalent position actually. On one hand, she's now got the bit between her teeth finally, after years of mindless work and drudgery and uncertainty, with having a potential rival now in Dr. Hedo to try and outthink. Now having fully realized her use to the Dragon Team and Capture Corp at large in stopping the Red Ribbon Army, or at least trying to stop some kind of negative entity. But on the other hand, she's kind of sad that the only Trunks that she has to work with is the present one, who failed to take on board Future Trunks' advice and values in any way when he got the chance to meet him. Despite having that heart to heart in the Goku Black arc where both of them seemingly had learned from the other, he's the only trunk she's got. She's had to settle. That's sad. But hey, at least she does cool stuff, and that the dating thing is something that she doesn't really want. Unless Toyotaro and Toriyama change their minds for the sake of a gag. Oh dear. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Catch you later!